Since my last video, I've upgraded to the latest version of Ubuntu 2017.10, and with that came the latest version of FL Digi 4.0.1. What I want to point out really quick, and what I've noticed is under Help, you will find a uh, tab called Reception Reports, and this accomplishes the same thing that I did with uh, PSK Reporter. If you've already entered your call sign, clicking on this tab will open up the PSK Reporter webpage with your call sign already pre-populated. It doesn't do band or anything drilled down specifically, but it does take care of this for you as a matter of convenience. This might have been included in earlier versions and I may not have been aware of that or pointed it out, but I want to point that out now. Much of the software that people are using when they report to PSK Reporter is only grabbing the call sign. And with the call sign, a PSK Reporter is able to pull all sorts of information like determine your location and therefore the distance and by virtue of the fact that the person picked you up on a particular mode, they know what mode you're using. It's not doing a whole lot more. And one thing it's not doing is not grabbing uh, the power that it received the signal from. So there has to be other methods that you can use to determine how much power the receiving station saw when they received your signal. So one way of getting this job done, which I haven't mentioned yet, is, is a QSO. And your mileage may vary. Most people uh, have everything set up automatic. There's no real QSOs anymore. Everything's done with a click of a button. And asking for something out of the ordinary is, is enough to confuse most individuals on the other end. I will, however, explain for the purposes of FL Digi, uh, these uh, uh, QSOs and exchanges of information, there are two particularly important pieces of information with regard to um, the QRP and PSK31. One is obviously the signal to noise ratio, which is labeled here as info one. The other one is IMD, and this is the uh, distortion of the signal. And this is something that I deal with with uh, um, amplifiers, uh, audio amplifiers as well, this measurement of distortion. And this has a lot to do with uh, people, when you see people uh, splattering uh, PSK, uh, out of their radio onto the waterfall when you see it all sorts of distorted on there. This uh, distortion is evident. So these are uh, two specific pieces of information you want returned, right? Uh, not just for QRP, but for, for any type of session. But uh, knowing how much signal you have above the noise floor is important and knowing that maybe you should be backing off on the power from FL Digi to your radio because you're causing distortion is important. And hopefully, if you request this information, you may be able to get it back from people. It's not guaranteed, but it's worth mentioning. I promised in a previous video that I would come back to VOACAP and talk about the point-to-point -point analysis that can be done with regard to uh, propagation and the chances of being able to reach a distant end station. So I'm going to do that now. This is the uh, VOACAP main page again. The link will be provided below. But what I'm going to do is scroll down to a particular... Uh, one here, and this is called the point-to-point -point predictions. We're going to go through this right quick. We're going to fill it out, and we're going to uh, discuss the values that are returned. There's a lot of information that appears on here, and it could be uh, somewhat overwhelming. But just like the other one that we had filled out previously, the first thing that we need to fill out is our transmitter site. It happens to record my information already in here. We could see that I've typed in the Maidenhead locator and you could hit uh, locate calculator to fill in the latitude and longitude. What I'm going to do is uh, add my antenna, which I'll leave alone like last time. Transmit power of five watts and transmit mode, we're gonna say CW, which is the closest thing to digital. For the receive site, I'm going to pick something uh, not too far away, but, but not exactly close by. I'm going to choose uh, Guantanamo. I happen to know that it is in Fox Kilo 29. So I'll use that as an example. And I'll hit the locator calculator. Fills in the coordinates. And what we're going to go with is the same type of receiving antenna and a quiet noise level. 
And what we have here, as I bring the map up, on the, on the left hand side, we get a, uh, a representation of the two sites. We could see the red is, is the transmit site and the um, blue is the receive. But what we have on the right here, <laughs> this what, what looks like a convoluted mess, uh, we have to look for the particular band that we're operating in with 20 meters and also adjust for the fact that, that the time that's shown is, is not Eastern Standard Time, right, it's UTC. But if you look at 20 meters, uh, anybody who's, who's tried to work 20 meters at night could attest to this. And I, and I apologize because every time I point on it, these values are going to come up here. But it does show, um, and I can't show it the mouse and show it at the same time, but in this particular instance here, 20 meters is showing a value of 5, right? And over here, showing a value of 2 and then 0. So a little bump up here of 5 and it drops back down to nothing. And then right around here, it takes off and, and it jumps up to 63. And this is, this is the percentage of, of success reaching the distant end. And we could see all the way here, it sits at 98, 99 rolls off a little and then it, it nose dives we can see 60 it drops back down to, to nothing here to six and then so it stays until the next day and repeats this is what they refer to by the way as the circuit reliability what i like to use is the one month map here this is the circuit reliability map based on an entire month and i will click that now it's going to open up a new window and generate a picture We'll wait a second. These are the maps that, that I'm used to and, and what I've uh, used for quite a while. And we can see it provides some of the information that we're, we're looking for here. Um, gives you an idea of what's going on, what the basis for the generation of these values, basically. And it's color-coded, obviously. Uh, the color is going to represent the success blue being not successful and and that dark red being a hundred percent the uh right hand left to right axis is showing the time again utc and the other axis over here is showing the frequency now we're sitting around here 14 megahertz right in and around this area and we can see that during this time of day, just like very similar to the other one that we looked at, you can see that it's showing that there's just no chance of uh, um, uh, reliable communication here, right? Um, whether whether this one closely aligns to the other one or where it deviates is, is we would have to look at both and make comparisons or, or compare it on the radio. But you can see that there is a, a, a point in which there is basically no chance of communication. And then we can see how the color darkens and the percentage of success is increasing. We can see it's very high. It gets very dark right here. And then sitting here around, just at around 21, we could start to see it start to fade out. And then by 22 already, it has completely rolled off to nothing. So just based on this analysis, we could say that it does at least closely align in its characteristic to the other one, right? And, and maps like these give you a, a good idea of, of what time, if you're trying to reach a particular station, you would, you would try to do something like that at a particular frequency. Remember, this map doesn't just lock you down to uh, the 20 meter band. You could use this map, for instance, you could look at the 40 meter band on this map by looking here down, for instance, at seven megahertz, uh, given the information already provided, we could see that seven megahertz would be in fact more durable uh, during this nighttime condition right here as we draw this line, right? And become very good between 12 and 14, but right here between 14 and 20, become actually extremely unreliable and then start to build up again between 20 and 24. So very interesting that this picture allows you to see characteristics of a great many different bands all at once and their chances of success. There is a means by which if you choose, you can actually listen to the receiving station 
to get an idea of how well you're transmitting. And I've moved over to a second computer for this because this doesn't need to be done on the computer that's running FL Digi. As a matter of fact, given the option, it would be preferable not to do it on the same computer. That way you could have FL Digi open on one computer and be monitoring uh, the signal as it's being received on the secondary computer, uh, given the amount of lag, obviously. What we have here is Web SDR, and this is a system that I've been using for a long time. Uh, the link is up here on the top, websdr.org, and I will also provide it below. What I have done uh, for the purposes of this demonstration is I have limited it to the filter band of 20 meters and in the region of North America, uh, given QRP. Now, I previously discussed VOACAP, and in consideration of where I would believe the signal would even be landing, given the limitation of 5 watts, I am now able to look at the locations of these receiving sites and say, you know, the first one is Pennsylvania. You know, the second one is, is San Francisco, California, which, by the way, is not out of the realms of possibility as far as location goes in, in the late afternoon. Uh, third one is Michigan is a possibility. Uh, the fourth one, New Brunswick, and the fifth one, New Brunswick, probably not so much, right? Given the first three, however, we could see that the first one falls well within the range of bandwidth uh, between 13.4 and 15.5. The second one, however, does not, it's starting at 14.155. And that's not what we're operating at for PSK. The third one, however, is good. So we have a choice between receiving stations one and three for uh, being able to see on a SDR receiver what our signal looks like as we're transmitting it if it's making it to that receiving station. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press this button and I'll load this particular SDR. I'm going to move over to 20 meter fourteen oh seven oh. I'm going to zoom in narrow band. See if I could zoom in some more. Max zoom in. And we're on the PSK portion of the band. We can see some uh, PSK 31 starting to appear now. I've set the view for a weak signal right here. And it changed the color scheme of the waterfall, makes weak signals easier to see. I'll switch it back. This is what the waterfall actually looks like and then I'll change it to weak signals. You can see how much it improves. Incidentally, if the signals are strong enough, you could take a laptop with its external speaker running FL Digi and hold it close enough uh, to this computer and actually be able to decode the PSK that's coming out of here. It doesn't work very well, but it is possible. So we could see two stations here, PSK, that are reporting. Now, under ideal conditions, it would be possible for me to transmit from the uh, FT817 and see my signal come up here uh, on this receiving station. Uh, I found in my experience that if I were going to do something like this with QRP, uh, generally it would be something best left to something like CW down on the lower portion of the spectrum where I could actually watch the uh, CW appear. Uh, coming up the spectrum because uh, CW uh, is, is more efficient as far as propagation on QRP than PSK is. Uh, conditions right now on 20 meters are, are difficult, to say the least. There is something to be said about the fact that there aren't as many people on PSK 31 as there used to be. People on these digital modes, they move to the next best thing. Uh, several years ago it was JT65. Then it was like JT9, 
and now it's FT8. However, uh, these modes, as they became more sophisticated, and a lot of them are much more tailored to uh, QRP than, than PSK is, right? Uh, you could do stuff with five watts, you wrap around the world like four times, right? But these modes have designed into their structure uh, signal reports already contained in them. It's automatic. It does everything for you. And I think there's a lot of value in this uh, with regard to what we're trying to accomplish when you talk about uh, making an antenna and, and seeing its performance. And we're not even talking about 5 watts anymore. We're starting to get into like sub-watt power levels. If you're wondering why this is all over the place, every time I touch a table, I'm, I'm destabilizing the receiver here. That's because this is a, a separate project I'm doing right now on 40 meters. And, and here's my receiver. It's, it's a little bit older than I'm usually using, but this is for a different video. So this is KJ4TLB. Thanks for watching.